Hey guys, what's going on? So in the video today, I'm very excited because in today's video, I'm going to be unboxing my first pair of Indonesian boots. Now, if you've been following the boot scene a lot lately, then you will know that Indonesian boots have been all the rage recently. And I actually just learned on a video by my friend Nick at Stridewise that the reason why the Indonesians in particular have a very solid foothold in the service boot, the niche service boot production industry, is because of Dutch colonists that, that colonized in Indonesia, I think back in the early 1900s at some point. So I'd have to go watch the video again, but apparently they passed on their boot making skills and craftsmanship knowledge to the Indonesians. There are still, to this day, a lot of Indonesian craftsmen creating, in particular, Dutch style service boots that we see made in the US and in Canada and in Europe to this day. And I think it's very interesting the way that a lot of these boots end up looking. So there's a lot of different makers. There's Sagara, there's Underhood, there's Renav Goods Co. I've been seeing a lot of their pictures on Instagram and a lot of my friends have purchased them and a lot of my friends have taken great interest in this brand. Now I can tell you that I already have a couple pairs on pre-order from Renaf Goods Co. An opportunity arose. What happened was a guy named uh, Mr. Calvin, for some reason he ordered these boots right here and I'll get into that. Full disclosure, I already opened these and looked at them and inspected them and tried them on. But yeah, I just kind of want to walk through my thoughts on this particular pair of boots. So first off, the box is pretty amazing because the box has like this magnetic, it's a magnetic enclosure flap basically that allows you to easily open and close the box. On the top of the box it says crafted from the hand of the finest and there's a horse here and it says Renav here. Indonesian made. Very sharp. And what's really cool, so there's like a metallic sort of shine that the box is painted in. It's, it's like somewhere between gold and platinum I want to say. It's like kind of a darker, shadier gold color. It's really cool. I'm, I'm really captivated by, by the like gold metallic look that the box has going on. That's really unique. And then here they are. They originally came in these, in these boot bags here that are again, kind of like a yellowish mustard type gold color. And I'll have to ask Ray what the significance is behind that. Maybe it's just a color he likes, but there might be a deeper meaning behind it. So yeah, it's got these really cool really nice boot bags. Now these aren't flannel boot bags. They're a different type of a material, maybe like a, a polyester type thing, but they really protect the boots well. Yeah, the overall presentation is very nice. And then it came with a separate set of laces. Now these laces are really unique. I don't know exactly what they are, but they are heavily waxed, whatever they are. And they're almost like a reddish color, a reddish brown color. I believe that they're like a heavily waxed, very smooth by the feel, cotton round lace. But yeah, very sharp. And then already in the boots are these round waxed brown cotton laces that are already in there. But yeah, I'm really captivated captivated by whatever this is. So I might end up I might end up using these laces in there. But again, this was not my MTO. Um, I just happened to see that Ray posted these as being up for sale again. So I messaged him, and the price was really good. So I so I hopped on him. These are in brown shinky horse butt. My first pair of shinky horse butt. All the other horse butt that I own is from the Mariam Tannery in Italy. And that's good horse butt, but um, my friend Jake at Almost Vintage Style, he really like just touts and, and praises the shinky tannery in particular for their ability to achieve very rich, bright, vibrant colors in their horse butts as well as in their shell cordovan. And I agree, shinky's shell is a lot brighter, a lot more vibrant. It is a little thinner compared to Horween's, but like Jake was saying, like the Horween shell cordovan is maybe a little bit thicker, maybe a little bit more glossy, but at the same time, the colors are kind of more dull, earthy colors. Whereas if you compare that to the Shinky tannery, they're busting out like very rich, vibrant colors that really like just scream uh, in vibrancy kind of like this pair in particular. I'll, I'll get to the texture and everything too, but so this is brown shinky horse butt. These shoes are for Mr. Calvin. So yeah, Calvin is who forwarded these on to me after I bought them. But yeah, it says ISN 106. I think that's maybe the style number. Brown shinky horse butt, plain toe, woodsman heel, my first woodsman heel right here. 
And it is, let me tell you what, it is a pronounced woodsman heel. This thing juts out super far. It's so cool. It's so stylish looking. Just everything about the, this is this is a crazy boot. I'm telling you right now, this is one crazy boot. It's got a single midsole, Goodyear welt, flat welt, 360 degree, red brown half sole, A1 soft structure toe. So it's a red brown half sole, doctor sole, non-slip. The doctor soles are all the rage recently. I have my pair of Alden Color 8 Shell Cordovan boots on the very last. I had them resold by Brian the Bootmaker in this in in one of these Dr. Souls. It's a very neat corded sole. I love it. It's it, like I said, it's been all the rage recently because it's just got so much happening with it. You know what I mean? Super grippy. It's got all kinds of really cool features on the bottom. These like cool, I don't even know what you call them, but yeah, it says super grip up here. So thank you to Ray for this stunning pair of boots for making it easy for me. Um, and thank you, Calvin, for moving them on and, and letting me uh, letting me acquire them and inherit them because they are insane. So first off, as soon as I saw these in the box, I was blown away by the craftsmanship. Like, I'm not looking for perfection. I never am, especially not with handmade things. But the stitching and the attention to detail is truly, truly meticulous and next level. Like, the stitching, like, I, I praise Grant Stone for their ability to have such a solid welt and the the welt on these i think i believe these are hand welted because they are perfect each stitch is like basically congruent completely even completely congruent with the next um so i believe that somebody would have had to punch the holes in the goodyear welt by hand and then just thread it through by hand by hand because it's so perfect secondly that that woodsman heel is so attractive like it's it's really it juts out really far there's just so much cool curvature so much elegant curvature happening with these boots not just with the woodsman heel but also with the a1 last so this a1 last is it's elegant like it is dressy and it, it might be even a, a little bit on the feminine side but it is damn sharp and i I, like I said, I tried them on once. I'm just, I'm blown away, really. But I wouldn't call it feminine. That's probably the wrong word, but it's it's extremely elegant. Proportionality, the dimensions of it, very interesting. So, like, it kind of narrows out at the toe, but I wouldn't call that an almond toe at all, like the Viberg 2030 or the Parkhurst last. I would call that more of just a, a narrowed out round toe at the top there. And then it, it does kind of widen. It, yeah, it definitely widens gracefully, elegantly as you come down, especially right here. It kind of, it kind of really, right here in particular. I think that's what's different from most of my boots. It kind of has like a generous turn right here, and it kind of comes out a little bit further right here. That these in eight and a half, they're a perfect fit. So I would compare these to. I'd say that they're probably equal to Parkhurst. I would say that they're probably equal to Mark Alberts. I would say that they're definitely smaller than say the True Balance or the 2030s. If your True Balance is pretty generous fitting, then maybe keep the same size. Like my True Balance in comparison to these seems to be a half size bigger. So my eight and a half True Alden Indy True Balance seem to fit a little bigger, but I'll do, I'll do like a big sizing video and all that. But yeah, I would say um, if your Vibergs are generous fitting, keep the same size if they're tight. If your 2030 Vibergs are tight, maybe go, maybe go up a half size in this Renab Goods A1 last. Same with True Balance. If your True Balance are tight or snug, maybe go up a half size for these because owning both an eight and a half, I have to say that the Renab Goods in eight and a half are like the perfect, like very supportive fit for my foot. I probably won't be able to wear these with very thick socks. My Indies and my tw my Viberg 2030s definitely fit more generously compared to these in eight and a half. So all my boots basically are eight and a half. Viberg 2030, Alden True Balance definitely feel more generous than these. It's just got such elegant curvature all around, like the heel, you could see that. And then, like I said, the toe right here, right in particular here, has got a really nice elegant curvature and just, you can see the, it's called a soft structure toe. Aside from the corded sole, the Goodyear welt, the very elegant last that these are built on, and the Woodsman heel, the biggest, biggest draw that drew me in, in particular, are these amazing honeycomb ripples all throughout the grain of the leather, particularly on the quarter area. And I'm gonna get some pictures outside to show just what I'm talking about, but I've seen this shinky horsehide with these just 
incredible. Like, I cannot, I don't know what causes that honeycomb type ripple, but I've seen it on Ticho Blanco's horse hides. I've seen it on, I think Denim Dentist has something like this. I've seen it out there and it is just wild. Jake at Almost Vintage Style, his Vibergs have the same thing happening. It's just the most beautiful honeycomb pattern and it's natural. It's a natural part of the horse's grain. It's not embossed onto there, at least not to my knowledge. I believe that this is something that is natural to the way that the animal's hide came as, as well as the Shinky Haikaku Tannery, their ability to really treat the horse hide well and really bring out the natural characteristics and, and emphasize the natural characteristics of the leather. On the vamp as well, where it's stretched out, you don't see as much honeycomb pattern, but you see a lot of marble, a lot of marbling. And oddly enough, so the heels, the heels are don't have that much character. It's, the heels are just kind of smooth. And I, and I would attribute that to the, the boot maker himself kind of cutting and using his discernment while putting together the boot in terms of like, oh, okay, this part has a lot of character. I'm gonna put the character all in the quarter here so it's on really on full display. And I'm gonna take the marbled portion and I'm, and I'm gonna stretch that over the vamp. And then, and then I'm gonna take the, uh, I'm gonna take this the smoother pieces of the leather and I'm gonna create the heel out of that. And they're both like that. They're both pretty much the same. I mean, they both have different patterns throughout, but for the most part, generally speaking, the vamp has a lot of marbling happening. And actually I see some honeycomb, some honeycomb character on the right boot. But then, yeah, on the both of the quarters of both boots, it's just got such strong honeycomb patterning. And then it's funny, like the heels are both really just smooth. I, I see some honeycomb and a little bit of marbling, but it, it's crazy how, how the patterning is kind of congruent on the cuts of each boot, on the different portions of each boot. One thing that I have to kind of compare this leather to is it's kind of like, if I had to describe the color, it's not just brown, like brown doesn't tell the story. I would say that it's more on the side of like almost a tomato. I see red in there, I see I see so much happening. I see, yeah, like it's, it's just a really nice warm orangey brown color. A warm reddish brown orangey color, if that makes sense. Kind of reminds me of my Albans in Alpine grain calfskin long wing bluchers that I have. It's it's all, also that sort of reddish tomato-y type color. But yeah, w when you get these outside, it's just, it's so eye-popping. It's so visually eye-popping. I'm not sure if this is the same leather that Jake has on his Vibergs, but it, it's definitely similar. And what's also really great is, is it's got this, this rolled edging here at the top of the shaft as well. I really like that. That's really sharp. Yeah, the back, the back of these, it's got a back heel block or a back heel cup that is one piece similar to how Viberg does it on their service boots. It's it's one piece. So that so the heel the heel cup and the back heel strip are one piece. It's triple stitched all the way around. Very elegant. And then on the quarter here, it's got double stitching and then a single stitch leading to the row of eyelets. And then it's got a single a single stitch along the top of the shaft here. I'm truly blown away by by all of it. On the bottom, it's got a Renav Goods company uh, stamp down here in the uh, in the leather I'm just everything about it I'm just yeah it's got it's got five round eyelets two speed hooks at the top some might characterize this as more of like like a feminine type of a look but I'm okay with it it's strangely I think it works I think it's still very manly in its own right I think it's I think it's kind of similar in some ways to say a Chelsea boot is it the manliest boot you can wear no, it's still pretty manly and just damn sexy, damn attractive. So I do not believe this is going to be my last boot from Renav Goods. I think, um, well, I, I do have a couple already in line that I'm waiting for him to make. But uh, but yeah, I just kind of want to get my initial thoughts out there because I am just so blown away by these. I mean, truly, truly blown away. Yeah, Indonesian boot brands, they're all the rage right now. And I get it. Like, I get the hesitation of getting into it because it's like, you know, I'm more of a traditional boot buyer. I, I like to see the boot online. I like that it's ready and I like to pull the trigger and I like to get it, you know, within a week and all that. And uh, in, in this case, it was like that because they, they went available for whatever reason, probably a sizing problem with the previous customer and I got these at a, at a good deal. The stars kind of aligned. So I'm really happy with 
how it turned out. I can't wait to start wearing them. I'll probably start tomorrow, to be honest. <laughs> I'm probably going to baby these. I'm not going to lie. Kind of like Jake does with his Vibergs. Like, he, he doesn't want water spots. He wants to really baby them and love them. Now, one thing that I will say is these didn't have as as crazy of a smell as some of my leathers, other leathers do. Um, these these kind of don't really have much of a smell. So like, it, but you know, you compare that to the Bad Lassie or to Horween Chrome XL or Horween Shell Cordovan or, you know, things of that nature. Like they have a really amazing smell. These don't really have much of a smell. Like, like there's some, but it's not like overwhelming. So I think that's all I had to say for now about these incredible new boots. Again, I'm extremely excited to finally be trying some Indonesian stuff. I do not believe these are gonna be my last pair of Indonesian boots. I'm blown away. So anyways, thanks a lot for watching guys. I'm on Instagram, you can follow me there. My username is LV. You can check there. I'll be posting pictures of these as I wear them. So anyways, that's all for now. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see y'all in my next video.